down. Um, so good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending where you are in Canada. Um, my name is Lisa Prin. I'm the manager of education and activation with the Gord Downey and Cheney Wenjack Fund. Uh, and we're very, uh, very honored and uh, happy to be presenting today with Mimi Obonsawin uh, in conjunction uh, in conjunction with the uh, Prairie Spirit School Division. So thank you for coming up with the idea to have, um, have this presentation. Um, so uh, before we get begin, I just wanted to uh, welcome everybody. Um, I see you're trickling in. Uh, we're gonna be talking about music and reconciliation and how you can include music in your classrooms. Um, before we begin, just wanna take a moment to um, uh, just let everyone know that this is can be sensitive material that you're dealing with, and we always like to to model um, model this in our presentations. So if you're speaking to students, you know everybody has a story. So some of this content can be very heavy. Um, so just make sure you know that you can always get help and reach out to other people. Uh, Crisis Services Canada and Hope for Wellness hotlines are on this slide. Um, just make sure you know that you are supported in this work. Um, the Wenjack and Downey families uh, have granted us permission to share the experiences of their brothers, uncles, um, Cheney and Gord with, with all of you um, in the spirit of reconciliation. And uh, this is just a beautiful quote by Gord, since we're all music lovers. Uh, music is the ultimate medium for expressions of love and those expressions find a beautiful backdrop in the environment. Music's also a popular rallying point. It, at, at center core, it's a way for people to get in touch with the best parts of themselves to, uh, and to voice the love in their hearts. I thought this was actually a very, very cool quote um, when we've got Mimi Obonsman with us, because uh, she is just amazing and full of love and inspiration. Uh, so we're just going to do a little quick overview of Legacy Schools program for those of you that not, aren't familiar, uh, a few examples of musical reconciliations, and then we'll let Mimi take it away. Um, so the mission of the Gord Downey and Cheney Wenjack Fund is really to build a better Canada, uh, inspired by Gord's call and Cheney's residential school experience. Um, today uh, marks the end of Secret Path Week. Um, as we honor and remember uh, Cheney Wenjack, who passed away on this day um, many years ago, but his memory and his life is not forgotten, thanks to all of you. Um, the Legacy Schools program is really helping to uh, engage students throughout Canada to talk about um, the residential schools and also about local Indigenous cultures and the beautiful way that we can move reconciliation together forward. Um, this is just a picture and one example of a great reconciliation between three schools in uh, Peterborough, Ontario. Uh, they actually recreated the secret path um, and did dancing, a, da a drum line and dancing, and it was really quite beautiful. So afterward, um, I can send out links to a video from these schools and a few others that have done musical reconciliations, but I don't want to take up too much more time um, because as we are connecting and creating awareness and education, uh, we do have. Uh, Mimi Obonsman with us here today. So uh, her music embraces the grace and beauty of Northern Ontario. Uh, Mimi is French Canadian and, and Abenaki roots and her musical creations are um, just all about love. So I am going to let Mimi take it away. <laughs> yeah. um, quai quai, bonjour. Hello everybody. Um, I'm here on unceded Algonquin territory uh, in the Ottawa Valley. I'm from Sudbury and I lived a long time in Toronto. So I have roots a little bit everywhere, um, but I'm really, really happy to kind of share the space with you. I'm a singer songwriter. I, you know what? I'm going to talk about what I do in a second because I don't want to sit here and be like, I do this and this and this, because I'm really excited to just kind of dive in and to something that I'm passionate about. Um, before I start, I know Lisa, I asked you a question in the chat. Does everyone have access to the chat in case, uh, I'm gonna ask some questions and I'm hoping to do a little songwriting session. Um, okay, perfect. 
Great. So I can see the chat. I have it open beside me. So at any point, if anybody has any questions, please feel free. Uh, and then I'm going to ask you a ton of questions and we're going to write a little song together at the end. Um, because I like to finish uh, a workshop session like this in a good way. So before we start, before I talk about how I like to tackle uh, songwriting um, and song creating to empower ourselves and to use as healing and as an expression and also as a teaching tool, um, I like to do something uh, called start with art. So if you guys can get yourself a paper and a marker or a pen or anything, uh, take a few seconds. And um, this is something I started doing. I, I did a lot of work with Arts Can Circle and Dare Arts, um, where they sent me to some amazing uh, communities in Northern Ontario, such as Attawapiskat and Webaquay. And I found that starting with art, uh, my friend Glenn Murray and I started doing this because it kind of breaks down those walls. Um, sometimes when we, would walk into a room and we start talking and doing all these things we kind of forget that art is why we're there and it kind of gets the conversation going so the start with art i'm going to put a timer if i can find my phone here and i'm going to put two minutes on the timer and what i like to do is to play with spirals lines and dots because it's accessible to everyone i'm sure there's some visual artists here I like to dabble in visual arts, but if you ask me to paint a chair, I would be able to. So let's focus on polka dots, lines, and spirals. And I want you to just kind of like flow with whatever comes without hesitating, without planning what you're going to draw, and just kind of seeing what happens. Very much trusting your instincts and kind of running with it. So I'm going to put a two-minute timer, and uh, we'll see what happens. Here we go. Sometimes I like to turn my page around and look at it a little bit. We've got one minute left. Got 30 seconds. All right. So you can wrap up what you're doing. And what I often like to do is kind of hold it out and look at what you created and see if you can draw out maybe a lyric or a line or a word or perhaps a color, just something you can draw out. We're also going to use this page, if you have a page, um, to write down some ideas throughout the workshop. So when we get to the songwriting section at the end, we have a bit of a word bank that we can work with because we're going to collaborate together. You guys can send in some ideas, some lyrics that maybe you've picked up throughout the workshop. So to share you my start with art, um, like I said, this is a really fun activity to do because you get to just trust your instincts. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a little while, but this is what I got going on. Spirals and lines and dots, very accessible to everyone. And now if I had to build a narrative out of this, I would maybe say that this is 
um, grandfather son, and then this is perhaps me with some roots down in the earth, and maybe the connection between both. So just something. I like to start with that because it kind of gets the the bugs out and the fog away. Um, so I'm a singer songwriter. I like to compose music. I like to play concerts. I love to do workshops with youth and and grown ups. And um, you know, when I was younger, people always asked me what I wanted to be when I grow up. And I always wanted to create music. And I feel really, really grateful that I get to do that um, every day as as my life. Uh, so I always make a really important point um, that when I'm sharing stories or songs that I always share them from my perspective. So I'm going to do this workshop from my own experience and, and please feel free to adopt anything you would like, um, activities or anything, but I feel like when we speak from our own perspectives, there's a, a really um, important element of authenticity. So I'm going to talk about how I like to create music and where I think songs come from and how we can use those things to have some perhaps difficult conversations sometimes. So question for you guys, what is a song? Does anybody want to put in the chat? What is a song? So I'm going to answer my own question here. Uh, it is a form of art. Yes, for sure. And I think a lot of times when people are put in a situation where it's like, hey, we're going to write a song, it can sometimes be intimidating. Um, so we have something, something that tells a story, calm, lyrics and music, expressions. Oh, yeah, totally. Trick question, there's no wrong answers. Most of my questions don't have any wrong answers. Um, but sometimes, like I said, sometimes we feel intimidated if we're put on the spot to write a song, but everybody's told a story before. And for me, the root of all songwriting is in story. And we're surrounded by stories. We are stories. Our, our ancestors have stories, the land around us, the people around us, the world around us has a story. And if we can see the world through creative lenses, we're able to use that as an inspiration. So if I told you that songwriting is simply storytelling, then maybe that takes away a little bit of the fear. I also approach songwriting uh, in a very non-technical way. Um, I like to use it, uh, you know, creating music and writing songs for me is spiritual, it's sacred, and it's something that I like to do when I'm at peace, when I'm in a good place. Um, so I don't think about the technic, technical stuff about it. I like to just kind of use it as an expression. So I think it's ac accessible to everyone in that way where you don't need to shred guitar uh, or on piano or bass to write a song. You can write a song for you um, at any time with the things you have inside of you. So calming and relaxing. Yeah, music is definitely calming and relaxing. And I think that's why we do it. Uh, I always understood and was taught that music is healing. Sometimes I write songs or perform songs because I need the healing, but sometimes I perform and write songs because I understand that there might be somebody out there who needs the healing. And oftentimes when people go to concerts or workshops or different things like that, um, people will receive that healing in different ways. So please feel free to ask any questions in the chat here. I'm seeing it all come through now, so that's great. Um, music is like medicine. To, yes, it is. It definitely is. Um, political and protest, for sure. So I might jump around a little bit, but I think I should talk about what's going on in the chat here that Music for me is a human language. Um, if you've ever heard music in a different language or instrumental music or, you know, sometimes you can always capture that story, the emotion. Sometimes it speaks to you. Sometimes it changes the way you feel in an instant because of the notes, because of the melody, because of the story and how it makes you feel. So it kind of breaks down these really strong barriers like language and environment and all these things and it comes through in a different way knowing that 
I put out music knowing that people are going to receive it in that way. That means something that is honest, something that is, you know, not harmful, something that is positive, all these things, because I know that it breaks down these barriers. That being said, when you say political and protest, um, sometimes those are difficult conversations to have. And music can be a really interesting tool um, where we can have a space to have our voices heard. So an artist that I really like is uh, Michael Franti. And what I really like about his music is that there's a lot of rhythm and dance and it makes you feel good. But when you are already grooving and you're in the moment and then you take a step back and listen to the lyrics, sometimes he's saying stuff that is very political and very um, strong, but your heart is already open to receive that message. So instead of having these conversations where we clash, perhaps we can use music um, to have our voices heard and to kind of have that conversation in a different way, knowing that people's hearts are open when they receive it. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm, I love music and I love creating music. Sometimes I get too into it. <laughs> music makes me feel good. Me too. <laughs> music is a human language. Definitely. So next question for you. Um, what is the first thing, one of the first things that happens when we come to life? One of the first signs of life. Music triggers powerful, positive emotions. Breath, heartbeat, yes. Thank you guys. I wanna thank you also for being in the chat here. It really helps me. Um, breathing is a huge part of music. If anybody here is a singer, you would know that. And whenever you're playing an instrument or, or even painting or creating something, the breath is very important. Heartbeat, speaking. Yes, these are all right. Again, trick question, no wrong answer. But for me, um, this is what I think about when I think about first signs of life. It's the heartbeat. So um, this is my drum and it was gifted to me by my uncle who also made it. And he taught me that this represents the heartbeat and the heartbeat is sacred. The heartbeat in the earth, in all the beings, uh, in all of you and all of me um, is something that is life. Um, and oftentimes people will see this as an instrument, although it's more than that to me. Um, but if that is music, and it's also the first thing we experience, doesn't that mean that one of our first experiences as human beings is music? That means it runs in our veins. That means it's part of who we are. And that's why it speaks to us in a human way. You can listen to a, a song in a completely different language, but still feel the, the, the emotions, the heartbeat behind it. Um, I always understood that music is sacred. All forms of music is sacred. Um, that's why creating music with people, singing with people in settings like this, in classrooms, concerts, all these things is the best medicine. So what I wanted to do now is uh, play a song that I wrote with my hand drum. And a lot of people will ask me, you know, how can you write a song with a hand drum? It has no notes. But for me, the base of all music creating is the story and the heartbeat. So in my music, I like to have a lot of rhythms and I like to really make space for the words um, because that's where it comes from for me. It comes from the heartbeat. It comes from our ancestors. It comes from our souls. Um, it comes from a really special place. So knowing that, you know, we can create something that's really meaningful. So I wanted to sing a song, it's called Mr. Loon. And I don't know where you guys are, um, but if you feel like singing along, uh, that's one thing I really do miss about being able to be in person is singing with other people. And I'm gonna talk about that in the next little chapter. Um, but if you wanna sing along, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sing out to you as a loon, and you guys can sing back to me as a loon even though we're virtual and you're on mute and I'm here looking at myself, but you get it, you get it. Here we go. This song is called Mr. Loon. Mr. Loon, sing me a song while I 
So if you can take, uh, thank you. If you can take a few seconds and write down um, how you feel, or if that song made you think of something, or a color, a texture, memory, anything like that, take a few seconds and, and write it down on your paper. So when we sing together, um, I know most of you probably play music and are singers. Um, so you know that when we sing together, we're creating vibrations with our bodies. And, you know, in the same way that my drum is sacred, I, I recognize that one of my main instruments is my voice and through music is the main way that I connect in this world. Um, so to take care of my body and, and my vocal cords in the same way that I would take care of my drum in a sacred way. Um, but when we sing together, we're creating a big vibration. And when we sing as a group, usually what I like to do is do some, some singing activities, even if it's just singing one note together for one minute with breathing and everybody's singing the one note. What happens is everybody's vibrations kind of stirred everywhere. And then they get to this like magic spot where everybody's kind of on the same wavelength. And that's where I think the healing is. That's where the magic is. We're creating this really powerful like energy vortex. And with that energy, we can send that out into the world. As musicians, I feel like when we send that out into the world, it's like our way of hugging uh, the world because sometimes the world needs a little bit of love. And I was speaking with one of my elders the other day, uh, a couple weeks ago, and she was talking to me about my drum. And she said, always bring your drum with you everywhere you go your drum is your security because sometimes i wouldn't bring my drum sometimes i don't want to play my drum sometimes i just don't feel comfortable but she said always bring your drum always play your drum it's your security and she also told me that this is not an abenaki traditional drum this is perhaps more of a anishinaabe kind of drum where the back is open so when i play my drum i'm sending out the prayers just like we do when we sing together, we're sending that, in, that into the world. But the Abenaki drum actually has skin on both sides. So when I would play a drum like that, you know, she said, you carry your ancestors and your prayers with you everywhere you go. So I find that really interesting because I play so many concerts and do so many workshops with my drum. I'm always having that streamline of, of positive energy and, and prayers out for anybody who needs to receive it. And if I were to make a drum, I would make an Abenaki one to have for me. So maybe one day when I need the prayers, when I need the healing, I could play that. So an activity that I usually like to do in a classroom is get everybody to sit on the ground in a circle and we take a deep breath and we just sing one note. So we would be like, uh, one person leads it. And when everybody's ready, they kind of jump in when they're ready. And when you need to take a breath, you take a breath and you continue to sing. 
So it'd be very circular, one note continuously, maybe for a minute, if you can make it that long. And you'll see once everybody kind of gets the giggles, you know, you get to that sweet spot. Um, and I, I think a lot of people don't realize that they can sing. I think a lot of people don't realize that they have rhythm inside of them um, because we're told that only musicians can do that. But I was always taught to, to create something for ourselves first. So I look at songwriting as, like I said, healing. So sometimes I write songs just for me. And when we do songwriting and workshops in classrooms, we do it just for us together. And if it grows and becomes something else, that's great. But the intention is to create something for us in this moment. And I do that for myself too. And I think that speaks to my, my culture and my teaching is to put a lot of intention behind things and not just create something to create it. And I think that also goes with uh, truth and reconciliation. You know, we can say all of these things, we're bombarded with a lot of information, but we have to put the intention, we have to put, you know, the, the energy behind it. And that's something that, that uh, Indigenous people across Turtle Island have been doing, you know, beadwork and symbols and regalia and everything, everything has intention, everything has power. You don't just wear something to wear something, it's got meaning. And when we can shift the way we think about the world we live in with that little shift, it makes a world of a difference, I think. Does anybody have any questions? I know we have lots of time left, so. Oh, there's like a little Q&A thing here. Musical word, a poem for music. Ooh, that's very poetic. Okay, you carry your ancestor in your prayer everywhere you go. Yes, it's true. So truth and reconciliation. We can say things, but we have to put intention and energy behind it. That means that you, that you truly care. It's true. And so I know I'm talking a lot about creating songs and how to songwrite because that's kind of the way, that's the, the path that I walk in my life. I'm really grateful that I get to bring in all of these things that make me who I am into my music and have that as an outlet. And when I do workshops, um, even if there's one student who can resonate with that, who can be like, yeah, I'm going to do that. I need that in my life. For me, that's a victory. Um, I was just uh, at a session this morning, believe it or not, I had a session this morning and I have a concert tonight and we're here now. I'm super excited. Um, but the students uh, were talking about doing land acknowledgements in, in a meaningful way, instead of just saying it without intentions. And we were really di digging into that. And um, we came up with the idea. So they had a project where they had to create a land acknowledgement and do a lot of research and present it to their school. And uh, we had the idea of doing that with music, you know, bringing in that element of not just saying the words, but feeling the words and, and um, having that little bit of intention behind it. I think that'll make a big difference. I'm just catching up on the chat here and we have to act on what we say, definitely. If anyone, oh, that's Lisa. If anyone would like to ask a question, we can unmute you. Yes, if you feel like asking anything, I'm an open book here. Um, in the meantime, it's so fun. Um, so when I decided that I was going to be an artist, walk this, walk through this life as an artist, I decided to look at the world through creative lenses. And so it kind of made, made me think about my childhood and, and how I got to grow up in the forest. And now I still live kind of in the forest and, and back to my roots. So growing up, I was a hockey player. And my dad was my hockey coach. And in the dressing room, he would talk to us a little less about hockey and more about life. Maybe we didn't know it at the time. But he taught us how to work really hard and and to work as a team and to take risks because sometimes you have to take risks um and sometimes you win sometimes you don't but that's what keeps life exciting so when i sat down to write my first song it was called risk it and it was a big risk because i wasn't sure how music would be received if i could do this but i wasn't thinking about that i was just reflecting on things in my life so one of the ways to start 
a songwriting session that I find really useful is to ask people if they have a saying in their family or in their life, something that they hold on to that means a lot to them. In my family, it's you are my sunshine. Um, it could be very simple. And then when you start to dig around, okay, so you got to risk it. That could be so many different topics. So when you start digging around the roots of it, oh, okay, there's another line here. There's another, and then you start building this bank of words and, and quotes and sayings that mean something to you. I also believe that songwriting does not need to rhyme, does not need to be anything other than what it wants to be. I think of songwriting as kind of a river that flows. And if you're open to the river, she will gift you a song. So all goes for me. Uh, you are the next Taylor Swift. I don't even know any Taylor Swift songs, but I'm going to take that as a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> um, so another song that I thought I would share today is uh, a song that was from my first album. So I just put out my fourth album. And uh, there's a song on there that I've carried with me. Um, every time I play a concert, I like to play it. I like to use it in workshops. And actually, when I was doing my first workshop ever, which I think was probably like five years ago or something, I, uh, oh, never give up. That's a, that's a quote in our family too. And you could, never gonna give it up. No, that's a different song. But you know what I mean. We can un unfold that and turn that into a song in no time. Um, but this song, when I was doing one of my first workshops, I uh, walked into the classroom and it was a grade four class and uh, the students kind of huddled around me and started singing this song to me. And I mean, as a songwriter, that is the greatest gift anybody could give me is young people finding themselves in your song. It's so powerful. So I always kind of carry the song with me and, and I just put out my fourth album and I put out a reimagining of this song. So it became a French and English song because it talks about courage. It's called Brave and my guitar is very out of tune. So I'm gonna tune while I talk. Um, it's called Brave and when I wrote this song, I was still in high school and I think I really needed to hear this. I, I realized that a couple years ago looking back on, on everything that I've done, I really needed to hear this message at that time. And that goes back to what I was saying about creating music for ourselves first. Sometimes you're gonna write something, you're gonna paint something, you're gonna you know, dance in a certain way and be like, oh, I didn't know I had that in me. I needed to hear that. It's very much a mirror. That's what I love about art. So I thought I would play this song for you. It's called Brave. Be brave with your crazy hair, be crazy like nobody's there, be happy. Just be yourself, don't be afraid. Be, be brave 
so yeah when i was when i was writing that song i don't think i i knew it um but i needed i needed to hear that message of courage and and i think that's something that we need to remind our young people and i say that feeling like a young people and being the height of a young people um sometimes we need to be reminded that uh you know sometimes we feel like we're not good enough we all have those moments where we feel like we're not good enough but we are we just need to be brave um beautiful thank you for sharing thank you um my arm hair is getting jiggy with her song i love it that is that is a nice compliment my arm hair is getting jiggy i don't know if i'm too french to read that but i think that's what you said and i like it i also have a song called weird but i don't have my guitar here with you so i'm just going to give you the gist of it i have a song called weird that i also like to use in workshops because everybody feels a little weird sometimes and um my whole life people have told me that i'm weird and then it kind of like you know there's a nice way of saying it is unique or eccentric but at the root of it it's it's weird um so I wrote a song about it to kind of reclaim it. And when I do that in workshops, I get everybody to say like, I'm weird and get really weird with it. Because, you know, through music, we can be who we are, we can dance, we can move, we can be as weird as we want. And everybody's getting weird with us. So it's so much fun. Um, so I know we only have a few minutes left. Um, so I wanted to see if we could whip together a song. So I call this like power songwriting session. And then at the end, if you guys have some more questions, we can do a bit of a, uh, Q and A. Um, but what I like to do for the songwriting part is I'm going to play, I'm going to play my guitar for, let's say 45 seconds to a minute. And you guys can take your page, your start with art, and you can write down some words, some thoughts, some ideas, one line or two. Write down as much as you want. And then we're going to go and put those ideas in the chat. And we'll have a word bank here. And we're just, I'm going to take all the ideas up here and just be a vehicle and see what comes out. So there's no theme. There's no restrictions. Just put some ideas out there. So I'm going to play a little vibe with my guitar. And we'll see what happens. right just write the first thing that comes to your mind that's always the best way if you start thinking too hard then maybe it won't work as well There's so much here. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna write some of these down. So I'm taking these words. We're doing it. Wow, I love this. So what I like to do, I forgot to say, what I like to do is write a verse and a chorus in my workshops. Also, because usually they're only about an hour. I like to write a verse and a chorus and jam that out with the group. Usually if we're in person, we sing. I bring a box of percussion shakers and things that everybody can play. And I like to write half a song because 
I always think that there may be one student or one person in the group who will take that song home and finish it. So it's all of ours. Anybody can take the song and finish it, leave it, whatever you want. It's all of ours to share. So what I'm doing is I'm collecting words. I'm just writing them down. I'm going to whip a melody out quick. And then we're going to play it a few times. If you're over there and you feel like singing and clapping along, great. OK, so where was I? Doo -doo -doo. Oh, you guys are awesome. You always find a point of mind for somebody else. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So here's what I have for a verse so far. I took a bunch of your beautiful words. Let's see what happens. that would be like a chorus. What do you guys think? I'm going to put them in the chat so you guys can sing along. Okay, so you guys are on fire. I am also very um, excited. I don't know if you can tell, but I get really pumped doing workshops and writing songs. <laughs> Okay. I'm free. I'm light. I'm water. I feel all right. Oh man, I have a show tonight. I should sing this. <laughs> Healing hearts. Love in action. Offering to myself. Soul satisfaction. Also, I know you guys are all teachers. Please don't judge my grammar. I'm a singer-songwriter. I don't need grammar. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. So I wrote these out here. So now we just need a chorus. So I'm free. I'm light. I'm water. I feel all right. Healing hearts, love in action, offering to myself soul satisfaction. Oh, that feels so good. Okay, so then there was some cool stuff here. Let's see what we can pull for a chorus. Do do do. If anybody has an idea for a chorus, one killer line. Oh, we got a new message here. <laughs> I was reading, I can't believe she made a song out of a couple sentences. Um, I was reading that like it would be a lyric. I can't believe we wrote a song in just a couple words. <laughs> This is great. We don't all English good. Okay, good. I'm in good hands. Okay, so there was something up here. Oh. Oh, so good. Okay, let me see what happens here. I'm free. I'm light, I'm water, and I feel all right. Healing hearts, love in action, offering to myself soul satisfaction. It's the path I'm on. Ooh, it's the path I'm on. What do you 
guys think about that? It's the Parthenon. I'm moving forward. I'm going to write that down. I love it. And I just caught that last one from Tara. Moving forward. That was great. It's the Parthenon. Okay, so I know you guys are in, in Western Canada. Um, so I'm just going to steal this song and perform it over here. And then if ever you happen to come to a show over here and you happen to hear your song, feel free to come on stage. I'm just kidding. I, this makes me feel really good. See, this is what I was talking about, is that healing, that coming together, taking the words and just kind of trusting our instincts. I think that is the biggest thing um, I think we need to do when it comes to music, when it comes to having difficult conversations, um, you know, talking to students about heavy topics or anything like that, I think we need to trust our instincts more. And this is the perfect example. You guys did that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to okay. So I'm going to sing this one more time. And then we have about five minutes. If you guys have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. We can tackle those. And um, yeah, I'm going to sing this song one more time. You can sing along too, because it's your song. And if you guys are, um, you guys can take this song to your music classes if you want and finish it. It's an A. I'm playing in an open A and I'm just doing like, I don't even know what this chord is, but it's just the other chord there. It's this chord. <laughs> Here we go. I'm free. I'm light. I'm water. I feel alright. Healing hearts. Loving action. Offering to myself soul satisfaction. had a really great thought if anybody wants to record their them playing this or with some students playing this or something i'm sure that uh lisa at the uh downey when jack foundation would love to see and perhaps even share a video i think that would be so cool i would love to see it maybe we can all do like a little collaboration where we all sing it together anyways um if you have any questions i know i rambled a lot i'm an open book so if ever you need to email me or anything like that um, my website is mimi.ca and you can find my email there um, anytime I'm, I'm always here and I know that Lisa and her team are also fantastic so uh, anytime you guys need to connect uh, we're here and if you have any questions I think we have a, a few minutes Lisa how are you feeling that was wonderful I'm gonna be singing that it just yeah I needed that today it's been a happy day so that was great thank you I feel good too. I needed that too. I'm, I'm feeling great. And it's, that's my favorite part about doing these workshops is ending on this happy note, this, uh, in a good way, you know, we all walk away feel it, feeling light and feeling happy with the song in our hearts. Yeah, I think we might have to take this for like the DWF theme song because it's the path we're on. That's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, that <laughs> well, you let me know. We can make it happen, all of us together. I love it. And I, yeah, if anyone wants to record this with their students, we'll definitely send it along to Mimi. And who knows, maybe this is the beginning of some sort of beautiful compilation. I don't know. We planted the seeds. We'll see what happens. Exactly. Um, well, thank you so much, Mimi, for joining us. It doesn't look like we have any questions, but lots of great comments. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for, for having me today and uh, for having this space. You know, I think it's really important to talk about music and how we can use it in everyday life. So Uliuni, merci beaucoup. Thank you so much for having me here today. No problem. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.